Okay, I've got my list box example here, and I'm going to go ahead and double click on it to bring up the properties dialog. And we'll take a quick look at these different panes. First, let's look at the actions pane here. You'll see that there's some different actions events here that we're not used to, such as on select and on double click. Okay, on select is when somebody selects an item from your list box object. On double click is when they double click one of your items. On key is the event that happens when somebody presses a key. And on focus is what happens when somebody focuses on that object, such as when they click in it. Okay, our attributes are basically the same as we expect from these objects. We've got the ability to numerically set its size and position, to name it, so I'm going to name this my list box. And additionally, we've got the ability to toggle the enabled and visibility states here by default. And of course, we can set those later by uh, way of actions very easily. And in addition, we've got our tooltip and the ability to check the spelling for our tooltip. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and set our tooltip. In the settings pane, this is where the list box really shines. You can see there's a lot of stuff available. I'm going to go ahead and expand the dialog a bit here so we can see it a bit closer. Okay, so we've got the ability to add items and then a corresponding item data for each item entry. So for example, if we were listing fruits here and this might be an order form, we might want to put the order form uh, corresponding product number for each product here. For example, if somebody was going to be ordering an apple, that might be product ID 1431. And then for an orange, that might be product ID 1532E. You know, it, it, it doesn't really matter what, what data you put there. The point is that it has to be meaningful to your project or presentation. So you're basically storing a corresponding data for each of your item text in your list. Okay? So this can be very simple or it can be very complex. That's up to you and it's up to your project, of course. In the options area here, you'll see that you have an option available for multiple selection, and this will allow people to select more than one item from your list at the same time, for example, by dragging over several items. If you click the sort toggle, it will actually alphabetically sort your items at runtime, so no matter what order they are here in design time, at runtime you'll see them sorted order. And then we've got vertical and horizontal scroll bars. Of course, these are the same as we've seen for other objects for when content exceeds the size of the object. Okay, So we've got the select font option. And this is your typical font dialog that we've looked at already earlier in the video tutorials. And you, you can see the options are pretty obvious here. You can set the font family and size and style. I'll press OK. And here we've got some special options for our background and for our text color and border mode. So our background here, we can change the background color simply by selecting a color from this area. Our text is the same. We can select a, a special color for our text right here. Now our border mode, this follows the same as it did with the input object, for example. Um, and it's basically none, so no border at all. Flat, and that's just a single pixel border. That's basically just a flat color or the sunken border, and this is the typical border that you see in Windows components or, or web components. So we usually use that by default, but you can experiment and see which one works best for you. Now over here, you'll see that there's a variety of options available at the bottom of our list box object area here. We've got an insert row option, where we can use to insert a row. We've got a delete row button, where we can delete a row. For example, if I select this lime row and click on the delete button, it's gone. And we've got a move row up and move row down button. So if I wanted to move my grapefruits up to second place and move my orange down to the bottom, I could do that using these arrows. And we've got sort buttons here. So we can sort our column ascending or descending, and that's alphabetical order. So for example, if I click on this sort uh, ascending icon, of course we get it ascending from alphabetical order. And if I click on the descending, we get it descending in alphabetical order. Okay. So that's pretty simple stuff. You can experiment and check that out. And that's the list box object property. So we'll go ahead now and take a look at the list box object actions.